Good afternoon. It is indeed after the 12 o'clock hour, 1215 on Monday, July 27th. We welcome you so very much to our broadcast today. I, along with Mike Henchman, am here in the sanctuary. And in case you didn't get to see the trivia question, here it is. What is the last book of the Old Testament? I bet you know the answer to that. Text us and we'll put your answer up here at the end of our broadcast today. And now for some good humor. If I repeat myself, I apologize. I did some of these in advance and then kind of lost track. But some are worth hearing a second time. Others you might not want to hear again. <laughs> a Sunday school teacher asked her little students as they were on the way to the church service, and why should we be quiet in church? A little girl replied, because people are sleeping? Never. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I've witnessed it a few times over the years, so it does happen. And here's one for us. How many missionaries does it take to change a light bulb? You know, the light bulb jokes, how many Methodists does it take? How many carpenters does it take? This is missionaries, and the answer is simply one, and 30 natives to see the light. Of course, we'll take as many people that see the light as possible. Amen? And now let's dig into our psalm for the day. It's Psalm 56. We're in that middle section that does not appear in the Psalter. Psalm 56 is part of section 2 or book 2. The title is a long one. For the director of music to the tune of A Dove on Distant Oaks of David, a mictam, when the Philistines had seized him in Gath. Remember, David pretended to be mad and King Achish bought it throwing him out of his presence and thus allowing him to freely go on his way. Let's hear the psalm related to that incident. Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in hot pursuit. All day long they press their attack. My adversaries pursue me all day long. In their pride many are attacking me. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? All day long they twist my words. All their schemes are for my ruin. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, hoping to take my life. Because of their wickedness, do not let them escape. In your anger, God, bring the nations down. Record my misery. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. David was running for his life. He took off from Saul, and it led him to Gath, to the Philistines. And the Philistines were enemies. That's why David pretended to be mad, to be able to get away from another apparent enemy, another captor. But as he was running from Achish, then Saul continued to pursue him. And he literally knew that there were those spies out there watching his every move and consorting against him to turn him in to Saul or to perhaps another Philistine king. David was stalked day after day, night after night, month after month. We will probably never know that kind of suffering, that kind of anxiety, praise God. 
In the midst of this, though, David finds the wherewithal to praise God. That's amazing. And David's way was writing words and composing music for those words. I wish we could know what the tune A Dove on Distant Oaks sounded like. I think it was last week that a dove took a position near our Bible study on the lawn. I had some serious competition as it was doing its thing. There is a certain loveliness to the sound of a dove, I think, and maybe that spurred David to write a tune that reminded him of that moment, and he said it to words. Roger Bennett, the pianist and songwriter, passed away in 2007. Prior to his death, he wrote this on his website. Our enemy stalks us exactly the way the Bible describes, as a roaring lion. He hides in the bushes waiting for any sign of weakness. Then he strikes. He didn't strike me physically. He struck a more critical part, my joy, my confidence, my hope. Every thought turned towards heaven, bounced back like it was made of brass. Every time I tried to look on the bright side, I ended up imagining a dark future. Then he threw his most effective dart, doubt. You call yourself a Christian? What a hypocrite. You're more afraid than ever, more filled with despair. So much for your faith, Mr. Gospel Singer. I believed everything he said. I tried everything I knew to pull out of it. I thought if I dozed off, it would pass, but the clock seemed to move in slow motion. Sleep was nowhere near. I tried to lose myself in the Bible, but the words blurred, and I couldn't make sense of them. Then Bennett had an epiphany as he thought about Paul and Silas in prison. They didn't despair, he wrote. They sang praises, and that became their weapon. One after another, old songs came to me, and I sang them to my empty room. It wasn't a great performance, but it may be the most powerful blessing I've received. Then referring to another psalm, Psalm 71, my mouth is filled with your praise all day long. Songs in the night work wonders. Songs bring the joy of the Lord. Even when we don't feel like it or think that God is up to something good in our lives, there are some very important reasons that we can still praise God. Here is Pastor Brian's top 10 list of reasons to praise God. Number 10, all of God's blessings. Number nine, God's presence. Number eight, God's goodness. Number seven, God's limitless mercy. Number six, God's incredible power. Number five, God's salvation in Christ. Number four, God's marvelous creation. Number three, God's strength. Number two, God's holy name. And number one, God gave us a privilege to pray. A reason to praise God can always be found if we look for it or if we recognize it. Praise works to give us a better attitude and to help us have greater hope. Let's pray. Lord, help us to have a mind that searches your vast wonder and can find strong and vital reasons to still praise you. Even when it feels like our words bounce back from heaven or we can't concentrate or we can't sleep, show us that there is a reason, even the smallest thing, things like a warm bed, a roof over our head, family, friendships, health. And when those things are threatened, Lord, help us to find in the midst of that moment other things about your great character that never changes, like your limitless mercy, your incredible power, and especially salvation in Christ. We don't always have to feel it to know that it's true. 
So in this day of challenges, in this day where the virus stalks us and social unrest stalks us and poor health stalks us and whatever else might be lurking in the shadows, give us victory because you are a God of incredible power and you are for us not against us. You have a plan and a purpose, a reason behind everything that you do. So grant us continued protection, wisdom, patience, strength. We pray for our family and friends. We ask for healing. We pray, Lord, for those that we don't know. We ask for healing. Give us the strength as a nation to bear this time and to become better for it. And yet we know that many have lost loved ones and we do not want to forget their hurt and their pain. Christianity can provide the very balm that we need if we practice what we preach. Help us to do just that, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. It has been a joy to be with you again. I look forward to these days together wherever you might be watching. And we're going to go ahead and give the answer to that trivia question. We'll see if some folks might have uh, texted in as Mike is working our great technology back there. Sue Chenoweth, you are correct. Malachi. Yes, the last book of the Old Testament. Let's see if we might have another guest to share with you today. And Lynn Ritter said, Malachi, very good. He got that as well. Wonderful. Usually those first and last of the lists hang with us longer, don't they? Genesis first, Malachi last, or Matthew first in the New Testament, Revelation last in the New Testament. And do we have any other guests, Mike? Okay. Thank you, Sue, and thank you, Lynn. Well done. I will look forward to being back here again tomorrow. I want to thank Mike so much for his wonderful help and the graphics that you saw at the beginning were his doing. And he's teaching me slowly but surely, and I'm trying my best to grasp as we go. I want to wish you all well. You are very much thought of, missed very much as well. We shall make it through this together with God's help. Take care, and God bless. <laughs>